is 42 carats here and that color goes all the way through the solidified sand I've put a torch light into it and uh, there's a little bit of a inclusion below this crown here it goes about right to there sorry about the fingernails and this one here actually doesn't go anywhere that's about as deep as it goes, maybe another millimeter or two. All these are clean. And it's got a straight pattern. Um, I haven't picked one up like this with such a uniform pattern yet, so. There's some potch here, just a little bit, but there's color showing through that, so it's very thin. There's a chip taken out of here, it's about one third of a millimeter, 0.3, and it's already showing color, so there's no huge loss there. I'm gonna chip the uh, the mud off of it, the mud sand stuff. Um, I've already weighed it; it's 42 carat, and then I'm gonna weigh it again after I chip all this off and dig out the holes. And uh, I'm gonna do that by hand; it's worth it. And. Uh, We'll see what that loss is, and then I can start designing a cut on it based on that if i got to trim some pieces out. I am hoping out of this, uh, based on its appearance and what my gem torch shows me, um, there are no cracks in this anywhere from what I can tell. There's no crazing or anything. So um, what I'm hoping for is to get, there's that dirty fingernail again, sorry. Um, If I could do 30% on this, that would be great. If I could get maybe an 18 karat stone out of this, that'd be great. If I can get 25, then that's just a whole new, whole new story. Um, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, it's going to be a freeform style, but it will be settable. Uh, it's going to be a very, very unique silversmith or goldsmith that sets this stone because I am not going for a cab design on this. I'm not going to waste this. I'm, I'm going to try and go for a full three, three dimensional piece. Color everywhere. Every freaking corner with no inclusions, no cracks, full polish. And that's what we, that's what I aim for on every stone if I can. If not, then I'll go ahead and do a, a flat cap back and round off the bottom edge. So, uh, here we go. Let's get started. Okay, so we're down to about 34.2 from 41. And we basically just diamond picked as much of the mud off as we can. There's some inclusion there, right there. Torch picked both those up. And this is sitting directly on color here, but there could be anything in there and that's all hardened so at this point we're gonna saw cut the sharps off I suspect probably down to about oh, maybe 30 carat once saw trimming is done and then I'll be down to 25 after uh, getting down to full color three-dimensionally so <clears throat> looking like it might be a 20 maybe an 18 to 20 when finished we'll see how it goes oh dear so <laughs> cutting opal some things can happen these little inclusions uh, weren't visible on the torch I could probably get those out I don't know which side to face from now um, my edges have inclusions. The torch is showing that this one here is fairly deep. And you can see where that is. That's right where I don't need an inclusion. That was hard to see under the torch too because of the sand that was above it. And this stuff here, the solidified sand, is turning out to be quite a pain. And you can see that potch layer right there. So I'm trying to preserve this bar and keep that pattern in face either off of this side or off of this side. 
So I'm going to continue working this down. And once I have this clean and this clean, um, I should have about a quarter inch of bar of color in there. And this actually does go all the way through, but then I've got to figure out edge shaping and whatnot because there's going to be some loss in there. Real nice material in here. I'll cut that in the saw and keep the chips, but that indent right there changes the overall shape of this quite a bit. So it's going to be a free form for sure. There's a little crack in there that will be going away. And uh, that inclusion there will be going away as well. So you can see the potch layer underneath the uh, solidified sand. So I got a little ways to go on it. I'm going to trim it with the saw so I can keep some of the pieces. And uh, well, hopefully I can face that off and get the end of those bars into a pattern. But right now, oh boy, we're at 25% right out of nowhere so that can happen sometimes apologize for the dirty nails again been working but um it's got great color it's just uh throwing me some uh curveballs for sure so that's why we gotta just slowly eat away at it see what happens um looking at maybe now instead of a 18 to 20 maybe a oh boy maybe an eight carat <clears throat> that would be great, but realistically, it's probably going to wind up around five. So, but that's okay. It's a beautiful stone. So, just see if we can get out of it and make it as pretty as possible. All right, here we go. Well, there we have it. Turned out really nice. Got a little speck of dirt on there, but got great color. I was actually, uh, when I was looking at the side of the color bar on this one, because it was like a bar, uh, I was hoping it would be a honeycomb on top, on the face or on the bottom. It turned out more almost like a like a hay needle pattern. I mean, the whole characteristic of this thing just changed. But that's all right. Yeah, that's a beautiful stone. I think it came out to about two, maybe three carat. And there's color all around this bad boy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop it off the top, and then I've got to finish the back. But uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. Beautiful color. Good clarity, too. I would definitely uh, grade the tone on this as uh, just side of crystal, just light, maybe an N7. Maybe an even an N8, honestly. But, uh, yeah, it should turn out great. Brightness, I would definitely categorize it as like a B3, B4. Probably a strong B4. Not quite brilliant. Um, it shines like this under uh, indoor light as well. So, And it is not unidirectional. It is color from every direction. So, All right. I'll go ahead and uh, shave the uh, the dop off and weigh it up and show that as well. Well, there she is, kind of teetering at 4.4 and 4.45. That's the back side there. Tons of color through this stone. Just great, great color. Um, let's see if I can get that flipped over real quick. There's the top dome side. And it's right on the border of uh right on the border of crystal. You can see lettering through it. Not quite legible. And that color is all the way through the sideband, all over the place. So that's a good cut. Um definitely worth 
the search. Sorry about my nails again. But this sucker is just... That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, this piece here is uh, what's left over out of about 41 carat. And uh, did some light trimming and had to work my way through some needle inclusions that literally went right down to the top of this stone. I mean, cutting this one out was as close as I can... I can get to remembering uh, cutting out thin color bar from Australian uh, Cooper Petty and Lightning Ridge. This thing was a definite challenge. It has beautiful color. Um, it's barred on the sides. Doesn't quite have a honeycomb. It's almost like a hay needle uh, style of uh, play of color. And uh, overall, it just turned out absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with it. And uh, I'll go ahead and get some pictures up on this video too. But yeah, it's got a nice pink hue to it. I've noticed that. Um, I haven't run into that yet. A very translucent pink instead of uh, light blue in the uh, light host material. Greens, orange, red, yellow, blue. But uh, this one turned out phenomenal so uh, until next time i'll uh, provide some more pictures in this video and throw those up uh, right about now i suppose <laughs>